This meeting is being recorded. Okay, welcome to the Kensington Saturday Night Tactical. We're going to be going over the Atletico High Press. So first, I want to show you guys a slide, which is um, there is. Let me show you here. There's three starting positions to the press. So if you can see my screen now, can everybody see my screen? Yep. Yep. Okay. So there is the um, when the keeper has the ball. I'm going to show you that one first. So there's the keeper has the ball, and then there's the center back having the ball, and then there's like offshoots of the center back having the ball that are like special cases. But I want to focus today on just two basic cases of the high press. And the high press, for those who don't know, is when we're in their end of the field. We're close to their goalie where we're close enough to the goalie to, to, to take the goalie out of the play with what we call a sweep. Okay. So let's go over to the keeper one. So this is what it looks like. Um, make it big seasonal. Okay. So could everybody see that? And this is when the keeper has the ball. And notice the starting position of the striker, in this case, number 19, we would refer to him as the functional nine for ours when we're talking in our system, because he's, he's the one leading the press. The functional 10 is here. That's Griezmann, number seven. This is the functional eight. And this is the functional six. And then these are the outside mids or wings, seven and the, seven and the 11. So the functional nine, when the keeper has the ball, and this could have been done from either side, but he was closer, right? So he's going to take, notice the, tra the trajectory that he takes. Here's the five center back, right? And here is the center defensive mid, the six, right? So center back, six. We always refer to the center defensive mid as the six. Look at where he, the line he takes. It's in between both. Now he's, he's going to do like a little bit of a curved run here. They're showing straight, but like what you want to do is make it very dangerous for him to make this pass. So speed is of the essence. You have to get him to turn his body is the key. It's called creating a strong side. You can see it written right there. We create a strong side which is the ball side. In soccer, the strong side is the ball side. In American football, the strong side is this side with the tight end, right? That's, that's the side you would run to because you, you put your tight end there, right? In soccer, the strong side is the side with the, with the ball. So um, you notice his goal here is to get the keeper to play the ball to the right. If it was Griezmann pressing, the goal for Griezmann would be to get him to play the ball to the left. Okay. So that's the role of the functional nine is to press in between the, the, the center back and the six. And there's a big gap there. Sometimes the gap is smaller, right? The gap could be smaller. So let's go to the board now and just look at the nine first. Okay. So I want to take this like one step. This is just when the goalie has it. You know what? Let's, let's look at the difference between the goalie. Now here's when, the center back has it. Okay. This is, you weren't able to press in time. He played it right to the center back, right? And notice now the functional nine does what? He's taking out. He's going to take, look at where he's positioned. He's taking out the goalie and the six. So either way, our sweeper or our nine, the guy who's sweeping, creating the strong side, is taking out, is intersecting himself between two players in a curved manner, right? So I hope that's clear. That's the initial move. Without that, the rest of the stuff doesn't matter. So this is what it looks like when, um, and this is going to be Eric, right, needing to do this, right, um, to recognize if the keeper has the ball, let's go back to the keeper. If the keeper has the ball and Eric's closer, he's going to come at the keeper and try to create a strong side, try to keep it from the center back. But the reason you're, you're not going here in this line is 
you want to be you want to create a narrow path, a dangerous path for the keeper to go to here. And we can also double mark him. We'll see that if he does play that ball, you can help out pressing. What you see in the next slide. Look at watch in, what happens. In, in this image, the the eight is like kind of shading those outside players as well, right? The number five and the number seven. Okay, so let's Atletico had Atletico is using the numbers of their players from that year, 2018. So let's let's talk about who's who. In this, it would, it, it would be the functional six, right? Because he's on the weak side. But I'm saying that he's their number eight, right? So that guy right there is like, he's kind of. Oh, doing... this is their eight. This is their eight. Number fourteen. Okay, well eight. then they're functional six. They're 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 five. actual number eight, right? Who's this is right? Five. No, no, that's that's not that's an outside mid. That's the, oh uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is why it's weird. So another way to think of this is, and I'm going to get to this in a second. I'm trying to give us, I'm trying to make this like, I don't want this to be complicated. Like it actually is not complicated. So it's my job to make this simple, right? Um, it's a three man press. So here's another way to look at it. And I'm going to get to these guys in a second, but it's a three man press, right? The functional nine, the functional 10, they're the two strikers. And then our eight is going to step up on the, on the back of the six when, when we're pressing the goalie. And notice these are guys Marcelo was talking about. Let's go to the back four first. Look, the back four is not doing anything, right? Okay. They're just, you know, be ready for a long ball because if the press is successful and they panic, they're going to blast it, right? Notice we have three in the midfield, the two outside mids and our functional six, which in this number is number five. The functional six needs both outside mids on both sides to be like a nice little line of three that will shift once we create the strong side, okay? But we're pressing with three guys. The eight essentially becomes a forward. If that's not a way to think about it. Our eight, and in our system, just like the nine or the 10 could become the functional nine, this in our system, the six or the eight could become the functional eight. That's why we use the word, you know, the functional, right? So in this case, um, this player here, Right. Let's say tomorrow that's Marcelo. Marcelo likes to play on the left side. Right. I don't know what side, you know, I'm not really sure what side you like to play, but then Marcelo would have been closer to this player. So because we're Marcelo would step up because that has to happen fast. This player has more time to adjust. I notice once Diego Costa has the functional nines created the strong side. Look at everybody sliding over. Look at the three midfielders sliding. See them. See them slide. All right. But for Eric's sake, I want to now show, look, Eric, check this out. If, if this is your, if this is not you, if this is your striker partner, right? Now what you're going to do is look where you're at. I want you on a line in between their center back and their center defensive mid. There's six. See this? See where Griezmann is? And I'm going to tell you why. You're not man marking either player, but you need to be balanced very balanced. The video I sent on GroupMe, you can see when Griezmann does it. I mean, he's like per perfectly balanced between them. And the reason is if the ball is played here, you can press. If the ball is played here, I'll show you. So if the ball is played to the six, look at Griezmann. Because he was centrally located, he can now we're, – we're about to triple mark the six. The eight, the functional eight – is stopping him from turning. Griezmann is pressing with a what we call cover shadow from the center back, so no safety there. This is a very dangerous ball to send back to the keeper at that point, right? Because Diego Costa, although he doesn't have a cover shadow, I mean, if you play that ball, that's very dangerous, right? Play the ball to the goalie, but he's coming to close down too, right? Here's a subtle thing. This is for the outside mid, which um, we'll have to learn later, but you might be wondering, well, what happens if he sends a bounce pass, right? A link pass. Well, that's where our outside mid job is to cut that off, which that's an advanced thing that we'll work on. Okay. I'll be happy if we just get to there. Right. We'll talk about that as it's happening. We have to kind of teach that. All right. So does that make a little sense here so far? Or is everybody like, it's the job of the nine is to... Let's get it back again. This is this is when the keeper has the ball and we're close enough to to threaten him. So 
your whoever's closer to that side will whoever's closer to goalie will 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 come in in between okay and then the the 10 so let's say this is Eric in this situation Eric will insert himself between the center back and the six and Gavin or Marcelo will step on the back of the six and whoever didn't do it, Gavin or Marcelo, the other six and eight will, will drop in a midfield line, a line of three. And you can hmm. see that, that that line of three will shift over. So does that make sense when we're pressing the goalie? I'm not asking you to memorize anything. I'm asking so, you just yeah, – So you're, the functional nine creates a strong side, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, plays it to plays it to the the functional tens side. The ten is splitting his space between the six and the other center back. The mm -hmm. eight is always going to press on the opposition six. Um, and then your three midfielders, in this case, your left mid, your defensive mid, and your right mid, kind of drop back and like shield the center. That is exactly right, Marcel. That's like the first. That's the first step. But there's there's more steps to this. But the the idea yeah, behind this, and I purposely left. I'm gonna try to like because the important thing is that we do the first step, and then we can you know. So so this is the second step. I'll show you. So this was the first step. The second step, if you want to see it now, but I'm not I'm not asking you to master the second step right now. We got okay. But the second step would be here's an example if they so play. So I got a question in, in Atletico, Coke and Saul, they were playing outside mid. Correct. I always thought of them as the center midfielders. So in, in Atletico's system, and this is going to benefit us because we have so many midfielders, they're basically converted midfielders. They don't really have wingers in a traditional sense. They 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 like what? to get their outside backs forward a lot. Interesting. When they're playing possession. Because when they're playing against like Barcelona or Real Madrid, they don't even bother really putting their fullbacks forward. But when it, but Atletico is a very adaptable team. So when they're playing Barcelona and Atletico Madrid, they run like a, they run their mid block, which we'll get into later, which is very um, conservative. But, uh, and, and they don't really try to get their fullbacks forward. But when they play against like a, a lower a lower level team in La Liga, they basically turn into Barcelona and they start pushing, they push their fullbacks forward like Barcelona does. Um, so they, they made their team very flexible. It's like Barcelona is such, Barcelona and Real Madrid are so dominant that they can always play the same system, you know, because they're, they're always on, they're pretty much always the best team. Whereas Real uh, Atletico, has those giants to deal with, but they also have to beat the minnows. So they have a very, they've developed over time a very adaptable system. And I think this is when they were at their best in 2018. Jim, I got a question. So in this, in this formation, the six and eight, is it as simple as like, if he's on the left side, the eight is going to press up on the opposition six. And if he's yeah. on the right side, the five or the, the, in this case, Partey would step on their six, right? So, Whatever way makes more sense to you, the way I like to think of it is whoever's, whoever's closest. Because, okay. the, the, because here it is. The, the job of the functional six, whoever that ends up being, is not as time sensitive, if that makes sense. If we don't step quickly to the six with our functional eight, all is lost. That six is going to get the ball. We're going to create the strong side. The goalie is going to send the ball. And imagine if the eight was too slow to react and he was still where he was, right? Where the beginning of the arrow is, that six would turn. So every time the six gets the ball, you want the eight on top of him. I want the eight on top of him before the ball's played. So there should never be a time where the six has time and space on the ball. It should always be that the, function, the functional eight should always be on top of the opposition. When we're, when we're, when we're high pressing. All right. And we, are we high pressing the entire time? We're high pressing when we're in their in their zone, their final our final third. Like, so when when they're in the final third, we're high pressing. Yeah. When we're when 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 they when when they're in the when we have when they have the ball in right. our attacking third, if that makes right, sense. Right, 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 right. And then if they break our line, we drop into what people are referring to as the seesaw. <laughs> right the it's called a mid, it's the mid block where you just kind of so this isn't the seat this isn't the seesaw 
this has seesaw elements if you look at it like but it's not it's not the exact same thing right like look at diego costa's up it has the same basic concept where diego costa the nine is up and the 10 is back right so it's very similar right but you can see that it's it's different right there's not remember to seesaw for looks like this Remember this? It's yeah, like yeah, an exact yeah. mirror. It's an exact mirroring when the center backs have the ball. And notice where they're at now. You're far enough away from the goalie where you're not going to press. They've broken out of their right. So we're just going to do the seesaw, which we have to teach the guys. And if we screw that up, like Eric, not used to it yet, it's fine because hopefully we just make up with it with the high press and our quality on offense that we can get in their zone and just press them, and then we'll teach the seesaw as we go here. But um. The seesaw is, I think the seesaw is a little easier to learn. Um, and so we're going to do a high press first and then, you know, hopefully recover and win the ball back before we even have to go into a mid block, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so let me close that. So where was I at here? Uh, set, this was the keeper press. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think Marcel, you summed it up perfectly. Like, you know, and, and, and Eric, you following this? You okay? Yeah, I got it. Okay. So, and again, I'm not, I guess you used to memorize this. Like the video I sent with Griezmann running it, like Griezmann gets to practice this every day. He got the practice every goddamn day. He doesn't have a, he doesn't have a day job or a day job soccer. So I'm not expecting, uh, you know, us to run it as good as that yet, but we want to, we want to start the process. So there it is, you know, the, the functional nine, uh, to make sure you're splitting, right? Don't go straight at them. It's in between. And then like Marcelo said, just the functional 10 is in between the center back and the six. And we need one of the six or eight to be quickly, quickly become the functional eight and step on the back of the six. So if he receives or he checks in, you're ready to follow him and not let him turn. And then the functional six should start to call over like, Hey guys, slide, 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 you know, slide left, slide, right. Right. Um, hopefully the functional six is yelling to his eight, like, Hey, step, step, Gavin, step, step, step. Right. Um, okay. So does that make sense for that? We, we'll revisit this in a second, but I, are we ready? You think we're ready to see the, the difference in the center back when we're pressing the center back or you, well, let's see this one finish out. So you can see the, the ball goes to six. This is the next step, which I don't care if we do right or not right now. I'd like to see it, but you can see it's pretty obvious, right? At that point, ball gets played. We saw this already, right? Ball gets played to the six. Uh, if this was Eric, Eric, you know, hits him right there, right? From a, what's called a cover shadow. So he can't play back. He's covering him just by being in front of him, in front of the four. Um, you can see the functional... Uh, here's a subtle thing. Look at look at where the sick look at where the functional eight goes to. Does he notice he's going to his he's going towards the right because that's where the link play will come from, right? Where he's going to try to the six will try to bounce the ball to the to the center back. So he's kind of going to try to throw his foot out and kind of force. He's going to he's trying to prevent a switch of play, right? Because if Costa, if the functional nine created a strong side, you don't want the six to beat you by bouncing the ball out to the weak side, right? Where we only have, look at all the guys they over here, right? So you want to, this is, this, is, this is an advanced move, but if you can get this down quickly, know that we want the ball to go this way, right? Because this is where we have numbers, right? Um, does that make sense? This is their, this is, this is where we want to stop them. And, and so not only will the functional eight help with that, right. But the outside mid who happens to be number eight, just to confuse the shit out of you, right. Is going to drop in and, and try to prevent that narrow that gap. And so is Costa. Costa would come in. So this is more advanced. We'll work on this as we go. Um, but if they are beating with us with this, now you at least know how. That if they get it to the six and he just bounces it, 
like a good six will we'll know how to do this, get it and one touch it out. Know that the, the, the way we stop that is if this was Eric, he, after he's done pressing the goal, he doesn't just stop. He turns and starts to come back and our outside mid would push up and our eight would try to take away that side because that's the side we don't want him to go. Does that make sense? What I said? Yeah, you want to push him towards the strong side. Yeah, yeah. We want to continue to push him towards the strong side. So there you go. Um, and notice even here, like, because we know that we have him trapped, you can see the six kinking in, right? And just in case, you know, because the six is kinking in, the or the outside mid is kinking in, our functional six can kink in, right? Because they're, they're making up for the fact that the outside mid is pushing up, so they're sliding over. But again, we'll, we'll continue to work on this. This, this will take time. Now here's the ball. So that was showing what happens if the goalie tries to play it to the six. It's we're gonna trap him, right? This is what happens. We're pressing the goalie, right? So this is us pressing the goalie. We saw what happened when he did the sit, when he played it to the six, right? Now we're gonna show you what happens if he plays it to the center back. So this is where if this is Eric, this is where Eric comes in, right? Because Eric had this balanced position, he can now he can he can apply a cover shadow now from the six to the center back and you can see that our nine had just gotten done right creating the strong side he can now drop back and he's still taking out look who he's taking out he's taking out the keeper and the other center back right and then notice that everyone else is doing what shifting over because the ball has been played strong side has been created everybody's shifting except guess who outside mid is holding because we're going to we and the reason is um he, if he goes too early look what would happen with the 10 see the 10 someone checking in here so they're holding okay and then if the ball's played then he steps out okay so it's very important to this outside mid. this will be t-ben tomorrow if he can make it he's, if he can get out of coaching he'll be sitting here and we have to we have to kind of should tell them what we want, right? But you know, T Ben is going to want to go. <laughs> so we'll try to keep him holding there and waiting, 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 right? Because if he leaves early, and this is going to be on you, Marcelo, right? If you let T Ben leave early, what's what's going to happen? You're going to get pulled way out, right? You know what I mean? If this 10 is checking in and T Ben, it's going to be a mess. So you want to just hold and let's just trap him. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Just hold there. Um, if the 10 were to go up, uh, you can step up a little and just make sure that you're, you're blocking the lane. Like the 10 were to drop in, just, just, you can, you can start to move up with them, but just stay off, stay off to the side of them, you know, where, you know, you still have three guys here. Look at this. You'll have three guys there. It's basically a defensive triangle. Uh, you're, you know, the, you're saying that if the outside mid pushes up too high here, that the opposition's 10 can just receive the ball in space is that what you're saying yeah <clears throat> as opposed to like if he stays back it's more of a like a, a central shield like you have the six and yeah, the. Right. let's look at the board so if the ball comes over right so let's 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 actually do it Anish, you want to help me here so the ball let's say uh the goalie has it right and we we press right so i thought the center back has it well, no, I'm going to give it to the center back in a second. But okay. like, this was the original, right? So we press, right? And here's the six, right? And so Eric goes here, right? And the 10 is coming in, right? And this could be Eric. This could be Eric too, right? Okay, so he's coming in here, all right? And he's intersecting right here. The eight is doing what? Stepping up on his back, right? The 10 is going to try to check in, right? As is the eight probably, right? If they're good good players, right? They're going to, they're going to realize that. Any anytime a eight or a ten sees their six covered, what do they do? They should drop in. I tell you guys, if if the six is open, don't drop in, right? Like, stay hot. But he's covered, right? So they're gonna drop in. So it's important that um, as this ball gets played, right now, Eric can press it. He might start to take a touch this way, right? And then if I'm going to show you what happens because remember the eight was here. 
you would be sliding over as the ball was getting played, right? So the ball gets played. Now you're going to, you're sliding, right? But if this, if, if, when this ball gets played, if this guy leaves too early, it leaves this hole that like, he might not be able to get there in time. You know what I mean? So what we want is him to hold and we start to all shift and just wait. There's really no, because what we want is, even, even if you said the six got to him, now you're basically running a leads type system where now this guy's 1v1, right? We would rather this scenario, if he wants to play, we really want to protect the middle. So now if he plays here, we can double mark him. This is much better for us to win the ball, right? So we're, we're waiting. And then when the ball, if the 10 checks in, we can start to slide, but we still want this seven to just not get all the way up here yet. Just hold here. Oh, it doesn't turn into a press in this situation. It's like a, it's a contained defense. It's a containing now. Every we're, we're trying to get the ball to go here. And then, right, there he's going to check in. We're here. He's going to come in a diagonal. And now the ball... This guy can now slide, slide, right? Because there's a cover shadow here, right? Okay, he tucks in. The ball gets played. And now we double mark. The, our fullbacks have to be very good defensively, not let them turn. And then we double mark and we win the ball. <clears throat> you might win the ball up here. It's possible if the guy's too slow. I'm not saying you won't. But a really good team will quickly get the ball and then play. It so the outside mid really shouldn't press the outside back. He should wait for him to make that pass to the outside mid. And then he presses the outside back or the outside mid with the outside back. Yeah. He presses, he holds here. <coughs> he, you can step up though. Like you can step up, right? It's like you're stepping up and he's waiting. You guys should stay balanced. If the 10 checks in, right. He doesn't want to overplay this. Right. So he's holding, he's waiting. As soon as the ball is released, he can start moving. And move at a diagonal. Don't move like this, because then watch this could happen. Right? You know what I mean? And then, you know, he can then play like this, because you stepped up too high. It gets a little icky. We don't want that. So we, what we want is... We want him holding, holding, holding. When the ball's played, cover shadow the inside. We want to we want to protect the middle of the pitch. We want to keep everything to the sideline so that the sideline can act as an extra defender. He should – then the six can drop because if he did come like this, the six would have to stay, right? Because why? He's got to cover the ten. So if he cover shadows, the six – and the nine can now do what? Look at this defensive triangle protecting the middle. Isn't that nice? You know what I mean? That's very nice. And this guy can slide mm -hmm. over, right? And get into a counterattacking position. This is so as good advance. Yeah. Jim, since the ball is on the left right now, right? And the functional six is stepping up to there, that number 10 is right. What should our functional eight? Should he drop back more? A little bit more since this the is the is functional. The this is the this is the functional eight. This functional is the functional eight. Section. Yeah. So our functional six, should he drop back more? Yeah, right there. Okay. Okay. And then the 11 should slide over. Should when, slide. Once the ball is so over here. And what's going to happen is... Matter. Just, again, let me move I'm the pieces where, first. So, let me just move some so pieces where, first. Since the, ball, and, since the ball is on the left side, so that number six in red, it doesn't matter if he's open. Our function of six should drop anyway, right? Well, to, it's going to be impossible to get him the ball. I'm going to show you why. Because the if, nine is the... the yeah, okay. yeah, the not The seven is the point of the spear, and there's a defensive triangle set up right. to protect the, in, the middle of the pitch. Notice it's normally teams set up a defensive triangle to protect their goal area. We're, we're setting it up to protect the middle is the way we're going to do it. And here's the balance over here. And then the, this is key. The nine will probably make a run. No worries. We just bracket him. And remember, this is what I was telling Najee to do last night. Najee was hanging here or the other night. I want him to slide in so that the functional six can feel more confident to slide over. And then this guy can slide over to him. And notice we're practically entirely on the other side of the pitch. We should win this ball. Right? 
and, and ideally our, our, our functional nine right now, which is the number 10, ideally should he be lower since the ball is on the left or is he okay where he is right now? This guy, the fun, this is the functional yeah, nine. Can, I would yeah. like to see him ready in a counterattacking position, ready to go. You want him in a countering position just to prevent this ball. So he should hold here. Because we want to, we want to score. You know what I mean? Um, and he's here in case they do this. We do this. They do this. They're not going to want to do this because we're going to be right here. So they're they're fucked, right? That's why he's holding. Yeah. I think in a lot of cases there, three would step forward with the ball. In that case, would I immediately step in between three and five? So if three starts to dribble. You mean this way? That typically would be what would happen, I would imagine, once we start to press in that direction. Oh, go go forward. Yeah, you're going to follow him. You're going to follow him. Well, I'm nine in this situation. Yeah, yeah right. So would I start to step in between? Oh. Five? Yeah, you're going you're gonna to push over here. And you're going to push, and everyone's going to drop because he's going to be following him, start to drop, drop in with everybody else. See, everyone will start moving forward, including the 10. And now we're going to smash them. We're, we're just kind of dropping as you chase them down and try to try to, you know, try to like what I always say, the worst thing you can do in these situations is let, let the guy like take a stab at the guy and miss. So I prefer to just ride them. Is it, you know what I mean by riding them? Like just kind of like stay with them. And yeah, like, you know, like, yeah. Usually in this Especially, situation, you know, I would, that, Eric? Say I would, that, Eric. Sorry. I said, usually in this scenario, I would try to use the sideline as an extra defender. Yeah. And I would press in between three and five more, but you want me to hang in cover shadow 10. Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. You just kind of like ride him down. He's not dangerous right here. Like he's literally a fullback. We have our, practically our whole team on this side of the pitch. I'm nine in this scenario. <clears throat> oh, you're the nine. Yeah, you want to just, if once he turns. Yeah, don't I want to take away his, his backwards pass at this point? Don't we yeah, want to fold it, it, on? Yeah, like you don't want to go all the way in. You don't need to because you want to stay in a counterattacking situation, but you also don't need to stay here because the 10 can do that. The yeah, I would imagine that I'd be stepping closer to the passing lane in between, in between the three and the five. Not three all the way. Three to five, yeah, 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 yeah. Just and just, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't block it, but I would be ready to, um, because you want to, what you want to do, what you want to be doing is just in case he stops and tries to play the six. Mm -hmm. So uh, you want to keep this defensive triangle like a moving triangle with the with our this is our functional eight even though he's six right and uh, and then you as the functional ten you just want to keep this riding to prevent the ball back into the middle and then if the ball is played to the five right um, I mean they're in a lot of trouble here at, at that point right and then you also want to be here because you want to be balanced so that he can't. You can help prevent a ball. We're going to start to slide back again, right? You want to prevent this ball from coming in here. So you don't want to get too too high where if that were to – you could – I mean, in theory, you could take the whole thing away, but then, like we said, that would happen. So we would rather it like this. So you're taking this away. When it goes here, he presses like this. You slide. And remember, your job was to take the six originally when, when he had it. So you're yeah. still – watching the six, and then you could even cover shadow from the six and really pinch this guy. So I would have thought we would have wanted to keep three going towards the line by me stepping between three and five and then 10 dropping to cover shadow six. Yeah, we want we want six to drop. Um, um, this um, guy, this this guy's, we want him to drop so that, um, you know, there's no to help out if he checks in or if, you know, seven comes, comes across. We want to really just... We're not as concerned about the ball going back. I know that would be like, could theoretically really screw with a team, but we, 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 we're we okay with them playing the ball backwards as a general rule. Like we would rather them do that than forward. So we, we are on the side of like stopping the ball from the middle and stopping the ball forward when, when possible, except down the sidelines, um, if that makes sense. So, I get what you're saying. Yeah, that would completely close off the lane 
Um, it's just the danger is that again, it it leaves open the a good six will sit in there. And then and then if we did this, and then we would have to drop our ten. And now we kind of lost our we lost our uh, counterattack a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, we have everybody kind of man marked, but we kind of lost our counter. And it's still going to be difficult anyway because he could he could check in front of you and then play. So we just we want you to kind of keep that defensive triangle sliding down. Um, so let me close this. I want to show you before we run out of time the center back press. Um, I'm not going to show the special situation. So let me show the center back press. So this is this is like. The goalie has it, right? And nobody went, right? Like, for whatever reason, you just weren't ready or you were too tired. Okay, just sit back and wait for the ball to get played to a center back, right? Or it's a six kick and you have to wait for the ball to get played to a center back, right? Because if it's a six kick, you can't press the goalie, correct? You know what I mean? Or if he has it in his hands, you got to drop back. So what we do is notice the similarities. What's the eight doing? So this is the only, this is the other scenario we're going to try to work on tomorrow. Two things. I showed you the goalie one. Now you're going to see this one's extremely similar. Okay. So try to think of the parts that are the, that are the same. Okay. So so far does it make sense? Like the eight steps up and look, we have our back four, we have our line of three, right, midfielders, and someone has, you know, Marcelo, Gavin, uh, you know have decided, Gian, whoever, have decided who's going to step up and the other one's going to step back in the line three. And look, our nine and 10 are in a balanced position because we don't know which side the goalie's going to go with. There's a trick that the fourth one, um, it's called an optimal pressing scenario where look at the nine and 10 tilt. I don't need you to do that tomorrow, but just I'll just show you it. Like if this was Eric, he could like push up a little high which we, then we would kind of know ahead of time that he's probably going to go here, but I don't need you fucking with that tomorrow. Let's just get this down where you can be balanced, right? Um, and then the ball gets played. So, so this is pretty clear, right? Now we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna sweep the – whichever side it gets played to. So if it gets played to this side, we're going to notice what he's between. He's between the – the, this time he's the, the the functional nine is between the goalie and look where he's at right there. He's between the goalie and the six. He's between them. He turns a curved run, right? And if you remember back here, he was between two players as well. They were just two different players, right? Right? He was between the center back and the six when he pressed the goalie. Now he's going to be between the He's going to be between the keeper and the six because they're the two players that are going to that would be there, right? And notice the functional ten now, who happens to be number nine. He's putting himself where in between the center back and the six, just like the, that's the same role. So for the ten, he's basically doing the same thing. So there's a similarity. And for the nine, I mean, we're not idiots, right? Like we're not going to, you know. He's going to, you're just thinking like, do a, do a, if you do a curved run, you're always going to be good. Right. I would say if you do like a curved run and so the nine is just intersecting these two guys on his curved run. The 10 is still doing the same exact job he did before. And remember the eight basically did the same job. The eight is now up on the six. He just, as the ball gets played, he's doing what? He initially went right up on the eight. And then as the ball gets oops, as the ball gets played, there's now a cover shadow, right, on the six, so they can all start the slide. Notice where the nine started, right? The nine had that. Both the nine and the ten already had balanced positions. So really, they already had a balanced position between the the, the center back and the six. Look at both nine and ten. So that that's a clue. That's how you should start. When the goalie has it and you're not moving, just take a balanced position between the uh, center back and the six. 
And then when the ball gets played, okay, one of you is do a curved run to, in between the keeper and the six, right? In between the six and the keeper, right? And the other one who started here, you can actually slide now because um, this ball, he's not going to try to send this ball in, right? Okay. Very dangerous. Well, he could slip it in here and that's why you're moving, right? But he can't send the ball here anymore, right? So you can slide. Okay. And notice we're all just sliding. So here, look at our three midfielders, the functional six and the two outside middies. They're just sliding, sliding towards the strong side, right? And look at the, and our functional 10 is sliding now with the functional eight. And notice they're bracketing the six. Notice the functional eight and the outside mid, like we talked about before, are bracketing the 10 in case the ball is tried to be played. And notice the, the outside mid is holding, right? He's helping the, with the attacking midfielder, right? The 10, he's holding. And then when the ball's played, then he'll step, just like we talked about in the last scenario. So they're, there's, the jobs are basically all the same, right? There's just, you know, um, they're basically all the same, right? So, um, and I, I like if we can get this down where you're, you're kind of always in between two guys. I mean, that's just optimal, right? Because then no matter who they play it to, double mark. If, if they play it to the six, double, triple mark, really. The six is going to get triple mark. If they play it to the 10, minimum double mark, and the eight can probably help too. It's like you're looking at triple mark, right? Um, and, we, and like Eric said before, we have the sideline as an extra defender. So if the ball is played to the fullback, we step at a diagonal. And we made that little defensive triangle. Those are the two scenarios I'd like to get the start of that tomorrow. The, the initial press is what we're looking for from what we're calling the functional nine. Um, and once he goes, everybody's got to everybody's got to do their job. The nine, the ten, the eight, three midfielders backing them up. And if you know, if you think we're pressing to too high and, and, and they, as soon as they break the line, you should, you yell drop and we just, we all drop and recover. And I know Eric's, I can already tell Eric's the kind of player that he's going to be dropping rapidly. Um, and we drop when we try to just get into a block, which I know we haven't worked on that with Eric yet, but I'm going to show it real quick since Eric's here. If this makes sense, does this make sense? Or is there any questions on this one? It's basically, you know, we did we realized nobody moved and we were like, shit, which one of us go? The nine, the nine and 10 didn't know which one to press the goalie. So at that point, you're like, you can just yell like, hold, 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 hold. And then it's, and let, and, and tease them into playing it. And then he plays it. And whichever side he plays it to, that guy immediately does a hooked run. And the, with the functional 10 now, he's, he's the functional 10 now. Everybody else, including the functional, then everybody else shifts to the strong side. Everybody starts to shift over. Remember, it was the same thing early. Even though we all held, the only guy that didn't hold was who? The eight. That's you, Marcelo and Gavin. You guys, if you guys were to stay back, he's going to hit the six. The six is going to get turned. That's going to be a mistake by us, right? So does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And then that's it. We're almost done. Uh, I'll just show Eric. If we do get into a mid block, it's this. Uh, seesaw, as we call it. Um, so if, if they break our line and we're kind of like at midfield, um, notice you're not, you're not going here, Eric, right? like you would, because we're so far away from the goal, you're not going to take a curved run. You're going to go at a diagonal to take away the middle. And then the functional 10 will come at a diagonal to take away the pass inside, and the 10 will slide back. So that's what we call the seesaw. And then you'll see it here. Um, this is him. This is the 10 going too far. We, we want him to stay back further. 
this is what it would look like. The ball is played to one, from, let's say, this center back to this center back. The nine goes up, 10 comes back. The eight, the functional eight steps up and mirrors him. And the functional six drops back. We call this like the, the seesaw. Um, uh, I'm not going to show that. That's basically it. And then you, they're just showing you now how from that, if they do happen to get the ball inside, we, we press it. But if that makes sense, we would just keep seesawing what that would look like on the tactical board. Um, is we would we would drop. Let's say we got we got breached. So we drop. Uh, and these, can you help me move these pieces back? So we're now we're in like a mid block, right? And their four and five have it. Their six is in here. They're in like they're in a possession. They're in possession now. Right, we're in our mid block. Okay, um, the goal is so far away. So, if this is Eric, Eric would take a diagonal. He would drop. He would drop. He would step up. And the reason he steps up is just in case the ten checks in. It's his job to stop him. And notice now, there's just we're giving up this pass, and we're giving up this pass because we already know how we're going to press that. Right, we're gonna come in, right? So I'm not going to show that. We already know what we're going to do there, right? So if he plays it across, he drops, he comes in at a diagonal, right? Um, kind of like this, okay? And now this, this pass is not impossible, but as soon as it's made, we're going to, okay, the eight comes up, six drops. So look at this, look at the, look at the slant with our, you know, our, our two forwards and our center defensive mids. He drops, they slide in, right? Okay, everybody shifts over a little, can start to shift. Okay. Um, well, that's not when the six up, when he has it, all right? And then if they play it back again, okay, same thing. We come in like this, he comes back. Don't go on this guy, stay on the other side of him. Tease them into a pass, all right? Let the six step up. And the eight drop. Does that make sense, Eric? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, everybody fucks it up. So when they first learn it, so don't worry if you do. We'll just try to, you know, take you out for like a minute and go over on the board with somebody and then just run back, go back in. <laughs> like, I don't know what we're going to be in more the high press or the mid block. I, I have no idea. I don't know what Heritage's team's going to look like tomorrow. I have no idea. They, they improved, I'm assuming, um, from their Casa 1 team because they've recruited for the EPSL, but I don't know what we're about to face. Um, so I don't know if we'll be in their end or we'll be in a mid block. So hopefully if, we're, if we see that, we'll, we'll pull you guys off little by little and say, hey, look, we got to really get this mid block down, this little seesaw, because we're not in their end all the time where we can high press, which is what we've been you know, trying to work on, right? Okay, is there any questions before I turn off the recording? So, uh, Jim, in this case, then, uh, I know yesterday, uh, two days ago, you kind of mentioned it briefly. If, you know, they happen to come up, should we, from our center backs, trying to push them back by playing, playing a high line anyway? Or do we just, you know, play, to, do we, are we reactive? Because we can be proactive by center backs making a call for, to push everyone up. So we push them back to their keeper. How would yeah, you so rather have this is, this is critical that we do this. And this, is, this might take time to do this. It is critical that when our strikers are pressing, that um, we keep, we push up with them. But it's difficult because you got to be careful that we don't get beat over the top, right? So it's this. So the way you do it is when the ball is being played backwards. While it's traveling, the rule in soccer is while the ball is traveling, it can't be played forward. So that is your opportunity to push up, right? Okay. When a guy is turned around, you can push up a, a yard or two, right? Okay. If, you know, the ball is getting played back and then let's say we're, we're pushing, right? As the ball is getting played, we're all pushing forward, right? 
everybody's dropping because they're they said, oh shit, let's just play back. And everybody's they're all dropping to hell, right? And we're starting to push forward because the ball is being played backwards, right? This is your opportunity to, to push forward. As soon as the ball gets to the keeper, and now the keeper could theoretically play forward, we have to pause, hold for a second, the back line. So you hopefully you got as far as you can, and then you got to stop, right? Meanwhile, he's going to do what? Where's the six at? He's going to figure out, he's going to look behind him, see where the six is. He's going to start to come in, right? He's going to get in between here, right? He's going to step on his back, right? He's going to realize that the strong side's being created. I can start to creep a little, right? He can start to slide over, right? Because we know that the, the functional nine now is creating a strong side, okay? Uh, but he could still blast the ball, right? Now, maybe as the ball is traveling out to the four, right, he can't play deep. As soon as the four receives and you're afraid that he's going to play deep, guess what you do? Take a step back for a second. Just one, just a couple steps back. As you see he can play forward, take a couple steps back. Until the 10 gets close enough where you know when a guy's like bearing down on you and you know you can't step into a ball, right? You guys all... Played soccer a long time. So when you see that that's the case where four can't step into the ball, step up again. And that's what the center backs are actually watching. They're watching, like, when can the guy play deep? I mean, if you guys watch the – who's here has watched American football? I don't know how much you guys follow. A little, like, little bit, yeah. I mean, in American football, the, the theory is if you get the quarterback – turned around right <laughs> and he's facing his own end zone right he can't play deep so everybody comes forward right um but i mean so i don't i don't like making american football analogies because too many of the guys don't watch it so but but it's basically if the, if the if the player on the opposing team can play deep and put his foot into the ball take a step back because you can go back before the offense can always because you can't be off sides as a defender right so, like, oh, you always want to think before they do. A good offensive player will realize when his center back is in a position to step into the ball, and he will actually start his run and get a running start. So you have to, as our, our defenders, have to think faster than the offensive guy and just literally take a step back and be, like, ready to, ready to pivot, and you'll never get beat deep. That's how PK never gets – PK's slow as shit. You ever watch PK run? Not very fast, right? He doesn't get beat because he he recognize he he reads these situations, and we'll we'll work on that. But does that make sense, Dibba? Is that what you're asking? Make a little sense? Yeah, that answer. Makes sense. Yeah, and that's what we're reading. Um, it's not just like a blindly going forward. It's like it's constant, like you know, like a battle scene where we 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 march forward when when the opportunity pr presents, and then we we fall back when they can attack, just like in warfare, right? If we realize that. You know, oh shit, they can they can launch an offensive on us because they can they have a platform to send it deep. We drop. As soon as we get pressure on them and get them on the run, we push forward. And that's basically what the center backs have to do. We need um, we'll work on that with the center backs. Right now, they're probably gonna leave Eric out to dry a little bit and he'll be pressing and, and we're gonna leave this huge gap between the center backs, the midfielders, and the strikers, and we'll, it's something we'll have to fix. We're not we're not gonna play perfect tomorrow. We're gonna we're going to try to accomplish these, the first part of these two presses when they present themselves and then, and then figure out what we think we need to work on most for the next game. And that's what we'll, you know what I mean? That's how we do it. All right. Let me stop the recording. Any more questions? I'll stop the recording. Are we good? Good. All right. And I was just going to say, I know time is up. I was just going to say that, uh, it's likely that some teams, when you press them to the side, they'll just boot it out. They don't want to deal with, you know, just maybe you want to just cover one scenario when the ball gets cleared, how you just want. Because it happened two days ago. It happened a few times where they just kick it out when they were chasing with the strikers. The center backs, there's so much space between the center backs and the keeper. Like we have our backs to our goal. Now, you know, maybe you can cover that another time. But that can well, just when, when you're saying when, when their center back is going to just launch it, 
Yeah, or, or they're left back or right back. They're under pressure. They're like, forget this. Boom, they just hit it. And now they're so that's, not that's exactly not when. Guard. So when the when the fullback or the center back can play deep, you've got our our back line, uh, our center backs have to drop. They have to take a step back before their strikers take before their strikers take a step back. That's imperative that they do that. As soon as the seven gets close enough, and then this guy can't step into the ball, we can take a step forward again. So, like, let's say as the ball gets played, as it's being played, we can we can hold, right? And then as soon as it gets to him, we could say, as it's about to get to him, we could just quickly take a step back, and then his run is neutralized. And then as he gets close and he can't step into it, we can step back again and make him offside. Yeah, that's, so it's that's a little dance. Right there, yeah. That's going to be – that's going to that, – that's what makes a great center back. Yeah. Center backs could make, make their money without even touching the ball. They don't have to even touch the ball. They may, that's why PK has like 160 IQ. He basically reads the game um, without even – he never – he doesn't even have to touch the ball. And, and he just – he's controlling – he controls – he controls more than people realize back there. And we'll, we'll, we'll work on that with our guys – over time, but you know that's the general rule: is is look for the opportunity to push up when they when they can't play forward. That's the ball traveling on the ground where no one can step into it, and when we have pressure on the guy, he can't step into the ball. Push, push, pinch. You'll hear you're gonna hear fucking Thorn tomorrow, yelling squeeze, squeeze. Like Thorn doesn't shut up, which is a good thing, right? You've heard Thorn before, um, our keeper. So he's gonna, you know, he'll be he'll be talking. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the recording.